अगले तीस सेकेंड में आप बदल सकते हैं अपने लाइफ का ट्रैक एंड नेवर लुक बैक यार छोड़ो ये सारे हैक्स एंड सिंपली लर्न टू गेट अहेड जैसे कि दानिश सिविल इंजीनियर टर्न डेटा साइंटिस्ट हु डिसाइडेड टू सिंपली लर्न और कैसे हुआ ये पॉसिबल विद कोर्स फ्रॉम अ प्रीमियर यूनिवर्सिटी मेरे करियर ने लिया एक नया डायरेक्शन ट्रू चैंपियन हु अपस्किल्ड टू विन बिग हाउ बिग अ मैसिव हाइक दैट ट्रांसफॉर्म माय लाइफ दानिश चेंज गेयर्स प्रीटी अर्ली इन द रेस बट Prasen wanted to explore more to get ahead. Isiliye usne kara simply learn from mechanical engineering to a data analyst and a podcaster in his free time. Aisa career transformation kaise bro? Simply learn ke industry experts se sikha live aur khud ban gaya data expert. Itna kuch itni jaldi difficult to raha hoga. With a well structured course it felt like a piece of cake. That is simply awesome. What's also awesome is that 9 saal ke long career ke baad Nitin didn't choose a quick fix. He just added data science into the mix. Nitin, how did you change the game? Worked on real industry problems to become the real deal. A joint family, a regular job, responsibilities to bahut thi, but nothing could stop Nitin from getting ahead. What an all-rounder. Day ho ya night, with flexible learning, you can always make it right. Bashing a situation chahe jo bhi ho. Nitin, Danish aur Prasen ki tarah you too will find your way to get ahead when you simply learn. Kyunki aapke liye shortcuts nahi, simply learn hai sahi. Get ahead with simply learn. you let's let's chat and quickly network before we start it's a good way to network right these events so uh, we'll be starting right on time uh, thank you for joining early thank you so much Welcome everyone. We'll be starting the free program preview, uh, and uh, we will be starting right on time in few minutes. We're just waiting for folks to get to the line. Uh, 
I can see uh, introductions coming in on chat. So I'm Prasha Khan. I'm your host for today's webinar. And I'm joining from India. Tell us where you're joining us from uh, on chat here. I can see folks have started introducing themselves on chat here. I can see Shaul has joined from Qatar. I can see Amber has joined from Los Angeles, California. And I can see Dan from Canada. Would love to know in chat, where are you joining us from? We'll be starting in a few minutes. Uh, please get settled in before we start. Just a quick tip before we start that uh, if you have any question for our speaker here and Monday today has already joined us, uh, you can put down your questions in the Q&A box and we will have a special edition for the Q&A box. So in case you have any questions uh, due to, related to the program or in general career in AML or any, anything related to AML, you can ask us there in the Q&A box. And uh, we'll take those questions uh, during, this, uh, during the Q&A part of the session which I'll be telling you when we will be taking that in the next slide. Uh, but uh, in case you have any questions, please make sure to put that in the Q&A box or in the chat because we get a lot of messages on chat and uh, we might uh, miss out questions if you put down on chat here. So awesome. Okay, I can see Lisa has joined from Nashville. I can see Srini from New York. I can see Diago from Brazil. I can see Rama from Chicago. I can see Zahid has joined from New York. I can see Milan from US. Awesome, awesome. I can see Vince has joined from Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome everyone. We're starting the session right in a few minutes. Uh, please get settled in. And uh, would love to know where you're joining from on chat here. I can see a lot of introductions coming in on chat. I'm Rasha Khan. I'm your host for today's webinar. And uh, we'll be starting the session in uh, some time. Awesome, awesome. Keep the introductions coming in. We uh, have, we can see an introduction from our speaker here today with us, Armando, who has joined us. We'll be taking us through the program review of UTLA CIA Bootcamp. I can see Armando has joined from San, San Diego, California. I can see Jungu has joined from Kigali. I can see Joseph has joined from Dallas, Texas. Okay, I can't, uh, I can someone has joined from UK, but I can't get your name from your email ID. Please let us know your name. So I think uh, before we start, let's go quickly go through the ground rules we have here. So uh, as I said, you can put down your questions in the Q&A box if you have a question for our speaker. If you put down your questions in the chat, we might miss it because we get a lot of messages on chat and we would love to answer your question. And uh, the session is being recorded. In case you want to go through the recording of the session again, you can expect a follow-up email with recording link, webinar certificate, and bonus offer as well, which you'll be getting for attending this webinar for the program which we have. Uh, and also to request a proof of attendance for this webinar, please enter your full name in the post webinar survey, which you would want to see in the certificate of this webinar. Now, moving on, uh, this program is powered by Simply Learn, world's number one online bootcamp. Uh, we are very proud that we have 13 years of digital, digital skills training experience in this field. And also uh, we have professionally trained over 5 million plus professionals in over 150 plus countries. And we are very proud of that. So thank you so much for joining once again. Uh, now let's talk about agenda. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be obviously getting to know a little bit more about you before we start the session. And uh, we'll be talking about AIML careers here. We'll be talking about what's a UTLS bootcamp. And uh, we'll be sharing learner outcomes, enrollment steps of the program, and also a special duration for the Q&A part. We'll try to take a few as many questions as possible during this session as well. And in case we are not able to take up all the questions during the session, we'll try to take it in the Q&A part of the uh, session, which will be towards the end. So please uh, stay till the end if you have a question. Also, folks who are asking about the webinar certificate, you will be getting the webinar certificate. You can basically uh, put on your full name in the post-webinar survey for that. 
Uh, before we start, as I said, we'll be getting to know a little bit about you. Uh, so you can see a quick poll on your screen right now. Uh, let's get to know each other a little better. So you can see a quick poll on your screen, which says that how many years of experience do you currently have? So quickly go and vote uh, for that quick poll, which is here on your screen. So if you're currently studying, you can select the first option. If you have zero to three years of experience, you can select the second option. If you have three to five years of experience, you can select the third one. And the last one, if you have more than five years of experience, I can see folks have already started voting in uh, their answers here. And uh, folks who have just joined right now, we're just starting the session and uh, we'll be basically taking you through the Beauty Dealers Bootcamp review as well in the session and talking about email careers. Before we start, there's a quick poll on the screen just to get to know you a little better before we start. So how many years of experience do you have currently? I'll just give 10 seconds more for the poll because I can see most of the folks have already shared their uh, experiences on this poll. And I can see introductions still coming in on chat. Awesome, awesome. That's great. I can see Bala has joined from Campbell. I can see Shudivi has joined from New York. Welcome, welcome everyone. Awesome. I just, uh, I think most of the folks have already shared uh, their answers on this quick poll. So I'll end the poll in five seconds. So five, four, three, two, one. Let me quickly share the results also with you folks. So we can see most of the folks more than half of the folks uh, who have joined us here have more than five years of experience. And I, I can see that uh, one fourth of the folks have, are currently studying and few of the folks have zero to three years of experience and a uh, few of the folks have zero three to five years of experience. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. And uh, moving on, uh, we have a speaker here with us, Armando Gayana. Uh, Armando, would you like to give us an introduction? Sure, absolutely, Rasha. First, thank you very much for joining and making time. So I will be walking you through what we, what you would be learning and the skills that you would be acquiring throughout this bootcamp. But first, uh, Rasha, is my voice coming through loud and clear? Yeah, it is clear for me. Uh, I think folks, please like, do let us know in chat here if Armando's voice is clear. Fantastic. So, hey, listen. Um, okay, fantastic. Thank you, Diego. So anyway. I was uh, telling that I will. I'm one of the actual trainers of these boot camp. And let me tell you something. Um, you know, today there's a lot of thoughts around data, around making robotic process automation, uh, getting acquiring new skills, and with all these data we have nowadays, there is not a better opportunity to jump into data science and artificial intelligence. Which is, by the way, the way I went into data science and artificial intelligence. I come from the business, so I was not a software engineer. I was not extremely technical. I was mainly doing data analysis, analysis in conjunct superman programs. I was a director of operations. Uh, I used to I used to be a program manager, product line manager. Uh, I was leading a group of technical account managers. But in every single one of my roles, as you may already notice, there's a lot of use of data. Um, data to make sure that you drive uh, informed decisions, uh, data to support your decisions, to prove something. And that's how I went into data science. And that was, by the way, 10 years ago. Imagine, 10, ten years ago, there was not even data, data science masters. The amount of tools and environments that were not, were not existing. So I studied data science. It was kind of a manual process. So I got into data science, I found my passion in it, and I found that it was able to help in so many different areas, manufacturing, healthcare, uh, fraud detection, uh, human resources. And then all these tools come about. So with the experience that I have between cloud architectures, experience that I have with data analysis, and all the experience that I had in the business, supporting customers across multiple industries, it just found natural to me not to retain that knowledge to myself, but also to make sure that it's shared. Uh, because today, more than ever, we need more data scientists. And if, if, even if you look at LinkedIn or other platforms, there are literally hundreds of thousands of open positions around the world requesting machine learning engineers, data scientists, AI product managers, AI engineers, and there's just not enough talented people. There's a lot of people taking some classes here and there, but people that has that have the skills to apply that knowledge to real 
live projects, like real projects, manufacturing, human resources, that's not a lot. So I'm here to uh, make sure that everything's very transparent, very clear, and how the program is set up, how the platform looks like, and most most important, what will you be learning, okay? So thank you very much, Rajan. Thank you so much, Amanda, for a great introduction. Uh, moving on, we'll start with uh, careers in AIML machine learning. Uh, so let's start with how AIML machine learning has extended human capabilities. So, uh, so can you take us through that, Amanda? Absolutely. Um, so uh, now we have a boost in data. So even if you trace back through the beginning of of the known history of humankind, we have been recording our information whether in books or uh, carved in stone, writing paintings. But there was no easy way to share that information. Now, the past 20 years with digital, with digital transformations, digital technologies, we have been able to transfer information back and forth in almost real time. And that has been a shift in the paradigm on how we humans connect with, within ourselves and how we do things. Look back 30 years ago. 30 years ago, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Look, we have people from Canada, from UK, from Qatar, from the US, from Brazil, right now, real time interacting. We wouldn't be able to do that before. But now, this is what has been changing. The amount of data has been exponentially increasing. The compute power has been increasing as well, and the costs have been decreasing. So now you can have a, in a thumb drive, you can have terabytes of, uh, of data. Now you look back in, in 1950s, uh, you had a, a million, millions of dollars in, in five megabyte storage. So the fact that we have been growing the amount of data we can consume, now that means that we need to find patterns in that data. You know, data records what we do every day, whether if it's project management, how we hire people, how we make decisions about budget. Now, today, we need to find patterns. And if we look back and all the different revolutions we had, the Industrial Revolution removed the physical load from the human, right? Now, in this kind of technological revolution, we're awful loading some of the mental burden of us humans. And in order for us to take up that mental burden, we need to find patterns of what we do and then figure out how we can represent those patterns in mathematical representations that we can embed in applications, in dashboards, in reports. And that's precisely how data and artificial intelligence is enhancing and extending our, our capabilities because now we can find patterns of what we do and start replicating them without us getting tired and by us having the ability to make decisions about other things that require more context. So we need the more data, the more the more a ground will have to find those patterns. And that's the reason why we're here. In, in reality, Artificial intelligence is not anything else but replicating human intelligence or animal intelligence. And we have now very powerful machines or very powerful tools to help us do that with machine learning, things that you can't even run with your laptops. So this is part of what we're covering today. And again, there's not a better time than today to join this journey and to start riding the way. Raja? I totally agree with that, Armando. Uh, moving on, basically, as we can see that AIML has opened a lot of career paths. Uh, what are the career paths folks can take up uh, in this time in AIML? Um, so, and, and this is the thing that if you can see, all these roles are kind of new, right? Look, um, there's a, a great opportunity, not only because right now there's a wealth of opportunities for everyone taking these classes. I see that even um, there are people that are very experienced, like 75% of you have some level of experience. So you know that the next step is to, to give you a boost, right? In the way that you drive decisions, you make recommendations, even in your participation, maybe you want to shift careers, right? But also, uh, like 27 of you are coming out from school. This is a great opportunity so you can land your first job as a data scientist, machine learning operations engineer, but, Here's the thing, and here's the cool part, that you will notice that a lot of these roles are brand new. Um, a data scientist, senior data scientist, maybe those roles happen to be maybe like eight, 10 years ago. So if someone asks, I want a data scientist with 15 years of experience, well, good luck with that, because that was not a thing like 10 years ago. 
But even when you try to set up all the infrastructure, you can be a machine learning engineer to set up all the different cloud environment or on-prem environment to make sure that you can process your data um, automatically, that you can uh, that you can containerize your environments and deploy them into operations as a machine learning engineer, or whether you want to make sure that the data is properly structured, cleaned, uh, make sure you have a good feature store for you to start and the business to start consuming data as a data engineer. Maybe you are on the other end. You may be an architect or, or an AI product manager that will define the requirements and the technical specifications that will combine both the business problem with actual technical artificial intelligence solution. Or maybe what you want to do is to actually create the models, to create the models that will find the patterns that will be embedded in applications. Whether you go on the infrastructure side, setting everything up, making sure that the data is ready available, that you put together an AI solution or you build your models, this is your the tip of the spear. Now there are other roles like AI ethicist, AI uh, designer, and a lot of other roles coming up from all these revolution, not artificial intelligence. But trust me, an AI architect was not something like five years ago. A machine learning up, machine learning engineer, you look back five years ago, that was not a thing. So you have now the opportunity to get part of this tip of the spear and start understanding all those roles and broaden your career path. Because what you'll find in this bootcamp is the platform and from there you will be able to make some decisions with the technical knowledge that you need to start investing yourself in other paths in your in your career. Okay, so very exciting times, uh, Rasha. Hopefully, hopefully that addressed. Uh, that, that's great. And also, uh, no talking about the skills, you need to be up to date, you know, you know, skills to be an AML practitioner. So do you really need all these skills to become an AML practitioner or you can start somewhere? Well, as a matter of fact, Rasha, that's a great question. You know, um, in a lot of old boot camps, you can see that they go directly into supervised learning, making sure that there are libraries. But listen, today to build a model is really easy. Right, you, you don't need a boot camp to create a model. You don't need a course to create a model. There's very simple, very simple documentation to create a model. But creating a model doesn't make a data scientist. Just create a model doesn't make an artificial intelligence engineer. Uh, as a data scientist, it's not about the model itself. It's about understanding the data. It's about the storytelling. It's about even tweaking, tweaking the algorithm to have the best possible model. So if we go back and look what models are, models are nothing but mathematics on steroids, right? Mathematics with a lot of data. So if you want to make sure that as a data scientist, you're able to provide strong objective evidence that what you are doing makes sense for the business, for your stakeholders, you need to figure out a way to explain it. And you need to underline the, you need to understand the underlying math behind that algorithm not because everyone else understand, understands it because that's the reason why they are hiring you as a data scientist because you understand what others don't understand and you will be able to explain it in a simple way so do you need statistics and math yes you need them there are some people that they say that you don't but trust me as a data scientist that has been leading teams of data scientists send on machine learning operations infrastructure talking to a lot of different stakeholders and implementing solutions it is mandatory for every data scientist to have some foundational mathematics like calculus, um, probability, uh, or stats, and um, linear algebra. So those are the most. So statistics, calculus, and linear algebra. You have a good understanding about those three areas, you're set. Then you start building your algorithms, right? Mainly uh, your, your models with algorithms. And thus you have some learning methods, right? Most of them work with structured data, data that is in the form of rows and columns, and they'll be like the next step, which is the next step what you will learn in this bootcamp. But then most of the data is not in structured form, it's not in rows and columns. Most of the data is pictures, is web articles, it's uh, it's sound, is um, it's a microwave information, is um um, um, are collisions like in the in the CERN, right? So you you have a data, a lot of data that is, and most data is not in the structured way. So then you need advanced topics to figure out how to make sense of all that data, whether it's sound or speech 
or text or computer vision or video or any sort of unstructured data. And that's when we, we go into advanced topics like learning, like, like deep learning and neural networks for us to make sure that we understand how to create a model that can predict, let's say, if a uh, if if if, uh, if 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 an image is going to be showing up in the screen, like for example, a dog or a human, or maybe even so, for us to build very powerful chatbots like large language models, right? So yes, all these skills are required as a foundation to be a solid data scientist or artificial intelligence engineer, in Russia. Awesome! Thank you for taking us through that. Now, moving on, we have talked about the skills. We have talked about uh, basically what career paths you can take up in AIML. Uh, so what exactly is stopping you from becoming an AIML practitioner? What is your biggest concern? You can see a quick poll on your screen here. This is a multiple choice question. So you can select multiple options here. So uh, you can quickly go and basically share this. What is your biggest concern when it, when it basically comes to becoming an AIML practitioner? And also, we're getting a lot of questions in the Q&A box. So that's great, folks. We'll be taking those questions pretty soon in the Q&A part of the session, but we will try to take as many questions as possible for, for that as well. So don't worry about that. So I'll make sure your questions are answered. So in the meantime, Raja, while everyone answers these, I see very interesting questions like what would be a typical entry-level position? Well, that depends, right? Most likely will be a junior data scientist. A junior data scientist, a data analyst, or a junior data engineer, those will be kind of the the entry level positions, right? Um, also, I got an interesting question the difference between machine learning engineer, data engineer, AI developer, AI architect, data scientist. The machine learning engineer will set up the infrastructure that you need to train and deploy your models, okay, automatically. That's a machine learning engineer. Uh, they have solid, um, solid um, skills on the cloud architectures, right? They they are uh, focused more more on the machine learning operation side. Okay, that's a machine learning engineer. The data engineer works on the only in the data side. Starts aggregating all the different resources, combining them, making sure that data is consistent, that the data is clean and is ready to be used, whether by dashboards or by data scientists or by all the different roles. That the data engineer, the AI developer. And the AI architect, the AI architect is the one that works more on the product side, making sure that works with machine learning operations engineer, data scientist, to put together an AI solution, like an AI product. Let's say that I want to put together an application that predicts fraud. So an AI architect will say, okay, what are the components that we need, right? Then the other question I had is, is AI going to surpass human intelligence? Well, that's that's still subject to debate. I think, and I better say, I believe it will uh, sooner than later. I believe that it will start happening after we make quantum computing commercial uh, because of some fine tuning um, enhancements that we will see. But uh, as a matter of fact, it has already surpassed human intelligence in some aspects. If you go to like uh, AlphaGo, uh, it, it already surpassed the best Go player in the world. So I believe it's going to happen. I believe it's happening, but maybe not general artificial intelligence, but I think it will, okay? Then we can move forward, um, Raja. Sure, I think, uh, thank you so much for taking this question, Armando. I think I've gotten a lot of uh, responses here already by folks, basically what exactly is stopping them. So let me quickly end the poll and share the results. Uh, as we can see that we have gotten the highest amount of votes for I basically can't find a program with a fully comprehensive curriculum. And I can see less than half the folks have voted for I wouldn't get the practical exposure you need to become job ready. And I can see a few of the folks have voted for my work skill won't allow me enough time for learning. And the very few folks have voted for I find it difficult to learn from pre-recorded videos. So thank you so much for sharing that. What exactly is the biggest challenge and concern when it uh, comes to becoming an AIML practitioner? Now talking about the program here. So we have this AIML machine learning bootcamp by UTLS, which pro which provides you a comprehensive and industry aligned curriculum, and also give you access to hands-on labs and projects, and also online virtual la life classroom experience as well. Uh, this is flexible to fit your lifestyle in case you are working, you are working professional, which I, I see that we have gotten here. Uh, you know when we did the experience poll as well. The learning format for this one is online, and uh, you can complete this program in six months. You need to just give ten to fifteen per hour weeks to complete this program. 
so Armando just wanted to know like what exactly happens in this live virtual classroom. What kind of experience, you know, uh, folks get when they join this program. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, absolutely. So let me tell you some of the biggest things because I know the Rasha mentioned some of them, but one of the best, one of the best uh, benefits that you will get out of this course is the networking side. <laughs> uh, when you jump into these and in, into these boot camps, you will see that not only people are um, a lot of people are have senior senior level in um, in organizations, and they're looking for a boost to make sure they can talk to teams or put a, an AI team together. Uh, but also, there are people looking to create solutions, or some some of, some people join um, just looking to create something new, like can be entrepreneurs uh, or start or, or begin a startup. So the networking side is amazing. We have Slack channels when everyone interacts. They interact with myself. They interact with the, with the customer uh, success uh, uh, manager. They interact with themselves. So uh, initially, what we do is an induction section uh, session where we start, you know, introducing everyone, which is amazing. Also, something that is real beneficial is that the the, the overall this program was designed to make sure that. You don't like have the theory, but you have practical examples. Look, if you go to platforms to several courses, they will look at data set like the Titanic data set or classified flowers. You know, those data sets are kind of cool to, you know, play with. But let's face it, right? You will be getting data from manufacturing. You will be getting data from a school uh, and grades, and you will be getting text. And you'll be getting images. So a lot of the a lot of the examples are provided in most boot camps and classes. They are hypothetical. They have no direct application to into any industry. However, we focus on making sure that everything that you learn has the context of someone that is going to apply these on a daily day day to day basis. And that's the reason why the networking is important, because you bring us some use cases. We're studying something in class, which, by the way, you have some pre-recorded videos because some people, they are good at self-learning. So they have pre-recorded videos. And then uh, trainers like myself, we start going through the concepts, reinforcing what you see in the video and applying them and doing hands-on exercises in class to make sure that the concepts are clear for everyone. But here's the fun thing that you can request some of us trainers say, hey, you know, I have a I have this kind of problem. Let's say um I need to do some market segmentation and I have no idea how to do that using artificial intelligence. You can bring us your use cases and we can cover them in class as, alongside with the, with the corresponding topics to resolve your business problem. That's a great experience, by the way. So there's a lot of practical, a lot of practical um, um, experience. The capstone projects are really, really amazing. They're really cool. Um, and also you have the flexibility to jump in class and also to have yourself learning. So the overall learning experience from what I, from the feedback I receive, and even as a, as, as a trainer, I love it because I learn a lot from all of you because of all the diverse amount of, of use cases that you bring to the table and all the very different creative ways to solve them. Because that's the other thing. There's not a single way to solve the same problem. So when, when we start discussing about potential alternative solutions, then some of you start bringing better solutions maybe than the ones I have or maybe than the ones we found. So that brings the experience very applicable and that makes the experience... Uh, tangible for for learners, which again, it's uh, it's precisely the way that these boot camps are designed. Oh wow, that that sounds pretty interesting to me. Thank you so much for taking us through the live virtual classroom experience. I think we'll be talking about the projects and even the learning environment as well in the upcoming slides. Now, moving on, at the end of it all, you get a UTLS Academic Excellence Bootcamp Certificate, which you can see on the screen here, and core and elective courses certificates as well, a UTLS Circle membership, and a recognition at an online communication. So in case uh, you want to invite your you know, close relatives, friends, family from far away, you can basically invite them to your online communication, which usually doesn't happen in an offline setting, right? You can invite everyone. So that's a pretty interesting thing about the online convocation part. Uh, now, moving on to the UT Dallas advantage here. 
So UT Dallas uh, is a renowned institution with a rich history of academic excellence. Here, uh, basically, uh, you get UT Dallas on your CV, which is very highly respected and acknowledged globally, opening doors to a diverse career opportunities and network. Uh, Armando, can you tell us uh, how exactly the UT Dallas advantage helps folks who are joining your schools? Uh, Yes, absolutely. So um, first off, you will not be getting a diploma from like any unknown uh, unknown provider or university. Um, UT um, at Dallas they validate the curriculum, okay, with 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 the, with their fellow researchers, uh, with faculty members. So this is this is joined a joint effort between Simple Learn and UT Dallas, okay. So the curriculum is reviewed, validated, and make sure that it's in line with their um, with their overall policies, with the level of quality, because they are leveraging simplans to represent a part of UT Dallas. And not only that, they are also um, um, they are also um, again of uh, the training material, uh, the the use cases. That have been that are constantly, constantly under review with again top tier members of the AI community in UT Dallas, which makes it not only beneficial to you because you end up with a diploma that is recognized by UT Dallas, but you also acquire the knowledge and the skills that has been vetted on both ends, on the academic side. With UT Dallas, with the latest research, with latest models, with uh, latest applications, but also in the industry side, with trends like myself and the trends that have the business experience, so you have the best of both worlds. So, and also, as you know, UT Dallas is it's it's a it's it's a globally recognized university, right? I mean, it's one of the top tier universities um, in, in in research and also uh, cutting edge in artificial intelligence um, and the likes of um of Caltech and other universities so great opportunity to have again the mix between those two worlds right the yeah. academic background and the consistency and the foundation backed by duty Dallas and the business experience led by uh by by tenure trainers with the experience plus the network inside so hopefully that uh addresses uh, the question Russian that sounds pretty interesting to me. Thank you so much, Armando, for uh, taking us to the advantage of UJ Dallas. Now, uh, talking about the eligibility and prerequisites. Uh, in this, you basically need to have a prior experience in a knowledge of mathematics and programming, a high school diploma or equivalent or at least 18 years of age. And uh, you need to basically have two or more years of work experience, which is preferred in this case. Uh, so just, just a quick question that uh, like uh, basically having a prior knowledge of mathematics and programming, have you seen students succeed if they basically come from maybe a similar background, mathematics or programming, or even have a little knowledge of mathematics and programming? What kind of uh, knowledge are we expecting here? You know, when we are basically writing down that, you know, we need these experience or knowledge in mathematics and programming. Um, so it's 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 not a lot of knowledge because we'll be having a refresher on math, on statistics, calculus, and linear algebra, but at least high school level. So at least that you know what is an equation, what is the equation of a line, what is a matrix, um, what is a little bit of probability. But again, it you don't require like an in-depth tons of knowledge or uh, or skills in, in math and programming also program there'll be a refresher but if you know object oriented programming doesn't matter if it's python java whatever um it'll be very good now of course we will go again through a refresher in programming because we we we've known that some of us we went to college or high school like a few decades ago so maybe you don't yeah. have all the concepts fresh in your mind so we'll yeah. do a refresher so you can gain that knowledge back. And also in terms of programming, uh, just as long as we can, we, you will not be program, you will not be software developers, but you need to make sure that your code is efficient so that you can uh, you can train models, you can process data in a way that is automatic and it's a way that is efficient, there's a way that's effective and a way that others can, can, um, can, can learn from 
and in a way that you can transfer your code to someone else, whether to a machine learning uh, operations engineer or an AI product manager so that your code can be transferable and understandable. And that's what we'll be covering. Wow, that's great. Thank you so much for answering that. Now, moving on, how this program prepares you, uh, how the program builds your AMA skills step by step. Uh, Armando, can you take us through these steps? Absolutely. So there will be one first session, there'll be orientation, so you get familiar with the platform, and you get familiar with all the tools that you'll be using and all the resources, which, by the way, there are a lot of resources that you have, you'll have you have available. Uh, so the first part is, okay, what is the ecosystem? How does the ecosystem look like? Different roles that will be available for you uh, between ebooks and presentations and humans like myself, right? And on um, your learning platform. So it's all the ecosystem and also introductions, how we will be communicating over Slack and the types of questions you'll be addressing and how we can be communicating with each other, right? So that's the first part. And then introduction on to artificial intelligence. There are several questions more lower level questions like specific difference between data science and machine learning, for example, right? And the relationship between data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence and deep learning. So we'll get a little bit more into the weeds about what is specifically data science, what is artificial intelligence, what are some use cases, and also how to start thinking of problems as artificial intelligence problems, right? So that's the second layer. Then we'll get more technical into data science with Python. Okay? Now, by the way, between uh, introduction and orientation, there will be uh, a, some refresher in math and programming so that by the time you get into applied data science, you have the skills to import different types of data and start doing some exploratory data analysis to understand some data. We'll be covering uh, distributions, uh, correlations. Um, uh, we'll cover things like how to calculate p-values, uh, what is a t-test for, chi-square, uh, to make sure that you understand how data science with Python can help you drive insights and get into modeling. Now then, we'll cover in machine learning, there'll be specific algorithms that will help you to solve very specific and unique problems that you can solve. So with a data science and understanding the data with a, with a foundation in, in, in Python, now we take it out into the algorithms that will train, that will train, that they'll be trained and will produce a model, will produce a mathematical representation of all the patterns. Then we'll get into a little bit more advanced topics. So before that, machine learning and below, it's mainly structured data, rows and columns like Excel spreadsheets on ta or SQL tables. But then we'll start processing more complex data like images and videos and sound. And that's when we get into deep learning, specifically with Keras. Now, there are different, there are different frameworks, uh, including PyTorch, Torch, and others. And we will cover them lightly, but the most widely used library for deep learning is Keras. And that's the one we're focusing on. Then we'll get a little bit into uh, Gen AI, um, how LLMs, the architecture of an LLM, and these will be mainly how to do prompting engineer, how to interact with different with different uh, GPTs, and at the very end you'll be having the opportunity to participate in uh, capstone projects like the projects that will be stacking all over the knowledge and the skill that you have acquired, and apply it to a specific business problem. And also on the side, we have electives that will be a little bit more advanced, and Rasha can speak to them. Yeah, so thank you so much for taking us through the steps, Armando. About the electives, the electives in this program are basically optional, and you don't have to pay anything extra for that. So electives here are advanced deep learning and machine vision, NLP and speech recognition, reinforcement learning, UTLS AI bootcamp masterclasses. So you don't have to pay anything extra for that. These are options. If you want to take it up, we won't be charging anything extra for that. Uh, moving on to the tools and platforms you'll be learning in this program. As you can see, Python, Django, Keras, OpenCV, Matlib, uh, Flask, TensorFlow, you know, being one of the tools which are present on the screen. And there are many more tools and platforms we kind of cover in this uh, program. Uh, maybe, uh, Armando, can you tell us a little bit about few tools and platforms uh, which basically folks will be covering this program to just give them a better understanding about it? Yes, absolutely. So, by the way, the, the overall AI 
ecosystem is so broad and so vast that it's very easy to get confused with the amount of libraries and tools that are at hand. Uh, the ones that we'll be covering in this bootcamp are the ones that will be giving you the flexibility to customize your own environment. Right? I mean, there are some automated tools that, you know, they're kind of cool, but what you, what you will learn is everything that you need to build your models for grounds up. So definitely Python will be touching base on um, some libraries for visualization like Matplotlib and Seaborn. Uh, we'll be discussing libraries for general machine learning or classical machine learning like scikit-learn. We'll be also reviewing libraries for computer vision like OpenCV, for a natural language understanding and processing like NLTK and Keras, for scientific processing like SciPy, and some frameworks that can help you deploy your models like Django or Flask. Now, there are indeed a lot more, but the ones you will cover will be the ones first, the ones that have more stable. The ones that are backed up by, by industry, by research, by academia, and the ones that will help you to build flexible products, okay? The most flexible products. And the ones that almost every tenured data scientist and AI engineer knows about. So this is some of the lives we will cover, but as Russian mentioned, this will maybe covering a few more that will add up to the toolkit that you will require to be a senior and a tenure data scientist. Thank you so much, Amanda, for taking us to the tools and platforms. Moving on the capstone projects, which we have talked about, for a capstone projects we can showcase to your future employers. Uh, now, having a capstone project in your CV basically will give a true experience when you're going and trying to get a job, you're trying to get job ready there. Uh, there are many more industry-aligned projects for your portfolio you can add here, as you can see on your screen. Uh, so, Armando, like, how exactly having these projects on your portfolio, coming from a completely different background, uh, going and trying to get a job in AIML field, how does this help? You know, how does how does this help showing that real world experience which you don't have, right? Absolutely, Raj. So as, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of trainings, boot camps, and online courses they use dummy they use dummy data sets not industry-related data sets across multiple industries. So by the time you come out from all these uh, uh, course and training classes, uh, you'll be very good with dummy, dummy data sets. But when you start facing like real world problems, you have no idea how to tackle them. So what we're trying to do is to get data sets, like real data sets from real companies solving real problems and try to address as many possible industries as possible to have diverse types of problems to solve from creating a model that can predict attrition to a model that can, that can, that can give you insights about vi like video training classes, like how to diagnose cancer or how to process images, right? So we try to give as, ma as many diverse type of problems across multiple industries. So by the time that 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 all learners graduate, at least they know what they will be facing. So that's that that's how we align our projects to industry problems and with real data from real companies. Uh, that sounds pretty interesting. Thank you so much for taking us through that. Now, moving on to the learning environment. I think someone in the chat has asked about the Capstone project slide once again. So I'll just quickly share it. I think but uh, you basically will be covering the Capstone project part in the learning environment as well, right? A little bit about that. So I think uh, we will be taking up that during the learning environment uh, for someone who has asked uh, on chat here. So uh, would you share your screen for taking us through the learning environment, Anwan? Sure, absolutely. Um, let me share my screen. Sure. Meanwhile, you do that, uh, folks. We have gotten pretty interesting questions on the Q and A box here, and we'll be taking those questions pretty quickly. Uh, maybe like during the session or during the Q and A part. So uh, please have patience and uh, stay till the end of the session for that. And also, folks who basically are asking questions about, uh, basically. Uh, the program part as well. We'll be taking those questions as well. So please don't worry about that. We'll make sure all of your questions are answered. Before that, let's let's take you through the learning environment for you to get, have a better idea exactly what goes around in this program by using this AI Bootcamp. Absolutely, and uh, apologies. I've been 
percent. Okay. So this is how the learning environment looks like. So first you will see that you have your UT and AA Dallas Machine Learning Bootcamp. When you go to the program, you will have all the different sections, right? And also a way to mark your progress, okay? With all the requirements. In the main tab, so by the way, you even have a way to add to your calendar all the different live sessions. So it integrates with Google and other calendars like iCal and other calendars, which makes it very, very convenient, right? Then you also have a series of resources, uh, Slack channels. Uh, but then when you go into each of those sections, by the way, every section is very similar, okay? Very similar, so in, in the format. So let me explain what you will find in every one of those sections. So the first thing you will find is um, all your self learning and the self learning are all the series of videos that you can watch. Um, now, what you share in the videos and what you cover in the live classes is somewhat similar, somewhat similar, it's not identical. But what I try to do is to make it more applicable to industry, right? But you will find also all the theory over here with all the lessons. Again, all this is self paced. <laughs> then you have your live class agenda right, all the different classes you have, and here you will find recordings. So you will find all the different recordings of all the previous sessions, which is super cool, right? And I think the recordings are uploaded like 24 or 48 hours after the session. When if you skip a session for a reason, you can always go back to the recording, analyze, if you have questions or Slack, and we can have conversations over Slack. Then you'll have the assessment. So for every assessment, you, you will see that you have a like a test, well, you have 25 questions and you'll have to pass them, but then you have problems. Look at these. One of the problems is for an HR department. You want to make sure that you are able to suggest retention strategies. And again, this is marketing, but there are, there are other problems. And for every lesson, you will have to submit one solution, one for not for both problems, just for one. But the problem is very clear described. You have the objective and you have, you know, all your different data sets, dictionaries. Not only that, if you go back to self-learning here, you have here your reference material, you have your data sets, all the slides that you find in self-learning, gotcha. the slides that I go over as a trainer, you will find them here in ebooks. So there's no content that will take you by surprise. You can download all your content beforehand, review it, and then come to class with questions. And also you'll have your notebooks. We'll be working in Jupyter Notebooks. Well, it can be Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebooks, but we'll be creating Jupyter Notebooks. And you can find the templates over here. Okay. Now, then some of you may be wondering, okay, so how do I how do I practice? Where do I code? So we give you an alternative. So so that you don't have to install anything in your computers, you have the ability to use Simple Learns Lab. Simple Learns Lab that will set up a virtual machine, a virtual environment just for you. Not shared. This is just for you when you can upload uh, upload your problem. Now, here's the problem with my network. But normally, you'll have your uh, your lab here. And then at the very end, you have your capstone project. Now, so the capstone project, um, right now, we're, we're, we're adding some of them in the, in the capstone projects. But normally, the capstone projects are uh, computer vision, natural language understanding. Some of them are healthcare, like a genome expression, pattern recognition, and stuff like that. So this is how the learning uh, platform looks like. And of course, you will have here the option to figure out how far are you from, um, from obtaining your certificate. So again, very comprehensive platform, very easy to navigate, very intuitive, and uh, blends virtual, self-paced, with virtual instructor led with projects with exercises by the way in inside all your self pays you will find exercises for you to answer on your own and then come with questions to class so that's that's how the platform is set up raja hopefully uh the explanation was clear enough so that there are no no questions from our audience uh, thank you so much, Armando, for taking us to the learning environment. Uh, let me just quickly share by, by my screen here. 
also flo- folks do let us know if you have any questions about the learning environment of utilis ai in bootcamp on the q and a box here we'll be taking the q and a box questions pretty soon here so let me just quickly share my screen back awesome now moving on uh, so we'll be talking about the learner outcomes here so the good thing is we have learner outcomes uh, coming from uh, you know uh, from world class organizations and diverse industries they come from industries like it software product manufacturing pharma healthcare bfs and others and they also come from companies like sap cosrich wells fargo target siemens infosys hp ibm and many more like this uh, and moving on basically sapian so also provides you uh, career as a services as well to help you with your job search uh, in this what we offer is you get free access to expert webinars and also you get to learn on real world projects across industries and also we'll be providing you job as a services as well which we have partnered with talent inc in this you get access to job portal uh, resume rabbit and also resume review and rewrite service from top resume and also one on one interview service from top interview so moving on uh, the program fee for this particular program is $8000 and uh, we have financing options also available for as low as $104 per month uh, if you have any more questions you can always reach out to us as askus@simplyon.net i'll be sharing our email id in the chat in some time uh, so we have talked about basically the skills we talked about what the program covers so what exactly is stopping you from taking this program so would you like to be in, in enroll into this ai email bootcamp by utls you can see a quick poll on your screen here and uh, it's a very quick poll on your screen to let us know your interests towards enrollment to the utilis ai mail bootcamp okay and Before, in the meantime yeah yeah please please we, we can answer some of the questions here because i know we're running out of time i have a questions yeah. from uh diego asking about the more advanced topics like what is greater market today whether it fits a process imaging speech and audio Look, uh some that I've noticed Diego is that it comes by waves. So at some point there's a big pause on image processing for like 6 months or maybe a year. And then things shift and then becomes natural language processing with large language models. And then again with video processing and then speech. So I would say that I have not seen a consistently predominant area I think it comes by waves again right now the force is about LLMs right but at some point everyone will know about LLMs and then something else will come through something else so right now it's kind of gen- generative artificial intelligence but what i believe it's going to happen is when you have a mix of several of them okay um and also something you can do is you can go to linkedin and then actually start looking in linkedin to see the the keywords for some of them Also another question I got a very good question Diego thank you and another question from Tom is about hey I live in a small town um so what's my best approach should I approach local businesses or do remote jobs today we live in a hyper connected world so the world is your oyster right so you can apply there a lot of remote works a lot of remote jobs that require data scientists to be quite honest as a dentist you don't require to be in, at the office So you will find an assortment of positions related to data science and analytics that are remote. So it, it really depends on you if you want to boost. Uh, okay, I think uh, our, our basically speaker is facing some technical issues. We'll be right back in few seconds. Meanwhile, I can see a lot of you folks have already shared your enrollment to Bootsy Digital as AI Boot Camp, and I think someone has asked about uh, the fee part as well of of the financing options. So let me just clear that on the chat here. So it is seven hundred four dollars per month. I'll just be sharing that on chat here for to help you out with your query here. and i'll be quickly ending the poll in 5 seconds so basically let us know folks if you are interested in enrolling uh, into the ut dallas ai mail bootcamp you can see a quick poll on your screen here and i'll be ending this poll in 5 seconds so 5 4 3 2 1 thank you so much for sharing uh, your interest towards the enrollment of the program now moving on i think uh, folks were asking about the enrollment steps and the induction uh, of uh, this particular program when exactly it started stopping uh, starting so enrollment and the fee schedule for 
program schedule for this particular program is basically uh, starting from uh, January 8th uh, to, to 2024. And the class will be starting from, say, like 8th of January 2024. And uh, you, there are very simple, three easy steps you need to follow. You need to submit an application to us at askus.net. I'll be sharing that email ID on chat here. And then once you have submitted your application, your application will be going for a review. And based on the review, you'll be getting admissions call from Simply Learns Learning Consultant. Uh, so also just to let you know, we have very limited seats for a cohort. We only take uh, folks like from 25 to 30 folks per cohort in order to make sure they're getting all the attention that is required uh, when you're joining this program. Also, uh, for folks who have already shared their interest through an enrollment, uh, this, this is a quick poll to just to understand how soon do you plan to enroll into the UT Dallas AMA Bootcamp. You can see a quick poll on your screen. And uh, there are four quick options here. If you're planning to join immediately, you can select the first option within three months, uh, second option. Within six months, third option, and the last one, more than six months from now. Uh, for attending this webinar, you'll be getting a bonus offer uh, for basically uh, joining this program. And uh, we'll be sharing you that bonus offer over mail post webinar. And uh, so basically, you can opt out for the bonus offer as well if you are attending this webinar for this particular program preview. You have shared your interest towards enrollment. So that's great. And also for folks who are still thinking about it, uh, basically, when to join, uh, you can select the options within six months or six months from now, because why to lose out on the bonus offer, right? You're uh, getting for attending this webinar for UD Dallas AML Bootcamp. I can see most of the folks have already shared when do we plan to enroll, but I'll just give five seconds more uh, for before we end the poll. And uh, we have a speaker back here with us. Uh, so uh, welcome back, um, Armando. I think you were facing some technical issues. Yeah, Zoom kicked me out. So my apologies for that. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Uh, I think we'll just give five seconds for the poll because I think uh, most of the folks have already shared when do they plan to enroll. Uh, so five, four, three, two, one. Let me quickly end the poll. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Now moving on to the Q&A part. Uh, I think we just have a few minutes. Left. I think we can just take five minutes to quickly address a uh, few queries. I think you have answered most of the questions, right? Uh, maybe let's just browse through the questions here in the Q&A box and uh, take up questions, you know, which are pending. Yeah, so I, I don't see any of the questions, but I would like to wrap it up with a quick comment, Rasha. And, you know, and maybe Rasha will kill me for these, for saying these, but whether it fits with us or someone else, really delve into AI and data science machine learning. I would wish that it will be with us because we have worked really hard to make sure that Everything's applicable, but trust me, once you get your foot into data science and get a good grasp, you will see what no one else is able to see. You will be able to find patterns when no one else sees patterns. You will be able to understand data in ways that no one else can understand. And that is such a fascinating journey. Um, Again, I, I, I've seen people's lives change and then you have the opportunity to change other people's lives with your models, with your patterns, with your insights. So again, with the fits with us, someone else, just delve with it, start looking at it, get into data science. Again, ideally it will be with us because we will work hard to make sure that you get the skills that you need with all the, the opportunities that you can expand your perspective. But once you get a foot into this, I would say that it's, it, you will hardly go back, right? It's really, really fascinating and you'll see all the advancements and you will be able to understand a lot of the, a lot of the lingo with large language models and Gen AI and processing and cloud infrastructure, things that most people don't understand, but now you will, okay? So Roger, that, that's all for me. I don't know if you have anything else. Thank you so much, Armando. Uh, thank you so much for taking us to the program preview of UT Dallas AI ML Bootcamp. Uh, we will just end this basically session with a quick, quick survey question which we have uh, before we end. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much uh, for sharing uh, a lot of tips for you know folks who have basically raised a lot of queries when it comes to AIML. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, so uh, folks, before we end the session, we just have a quick poll for you to understand if you need assistance into enrolling to the program. Uh, I would highly recommend folks who have already shared their interest towards enrollment and also have let us know when do they plan to enroll as well. Uh, please do quickly uh, just share basically if you need assistance into enrolling to the program. You can see a quick poll on your screen with uh, two options, yes or no. Uh, please choose an option which is the most suitable for you. 
uh, before we uh, end this session. And also, uh, please don't leave uh, yet, just yet, because I have a quick survey question for you here uh, to understand what exactly are you expecting from our webinars, because we're trying to implement a lot of new categories of webinars to help you out to add any value when you're attending this webinar here. So I just have a quick two seconds uh, question, uh, you know, survey question after this, uh, just basically understand what exactly is the expectation here. Thank you so much for sharing uh, basically infinite assistance inter enrollment. I'll be quickly ending the poll here. Uh, now, moving on. Uh, so, thank you so much, Armando, once again for joining us. Uh, would you like to say something to the audience before you leave? Yep. Just uh, please take a dive. Really, it's a passionate topic, and I'm hoping to see you in our next cohort. Awesome. Uh, we are getting a lot of appreciation for you, by the way, on the chat here. So I can see Anthony has uh, said, I'm on you're super great. And Asha, you're amazing. Thank you so much. And uh, Bala has said, thank you for, for the excellent introduction about this program. Uh, I think you're mute uh, if you're speaking, Armando. Uh, and uh, okay, okay, okay. I think uh, someone has also said, Sh Shahul has said, basically, thank you, Mr. Armando. And uh, Great coordination. Ahead. Appreciate that. Appreciate that we'll be able to, you know, showcase a great coordination here and also a great program preview walkthrough by Armando here. Uh, so thank you so much, Armando, once again for joining in. I just have a quick quick poll question here, quick survey, just to understand what exactly you folks are looking for uh, when basically uh, it comes to our future webinars here. So what topics or areas of interest would you like to see covered in our future webinars here? I've launched a quick poll here, survey quick poll, poll uh, question here. So you can see like uh, there are many options here you can choose from, but there is one option here where basically if you don't find your op basically suggestion here on this poll, you can put down your suggestion in the chat here. I'll make a note of it. So don't worry about that. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, also coming, you know, to Sahid. Yeah, of course we're inviting you, but hopefully in this webinar, you'll learn what the skills are required, like statistics uh calculus linear algebra all the libraries that we went through i mean you can also research them on, on your own and put something together so hopefully at least this let you know what the roles available uh what are the options available and what's the difference between different roles and also the skills you require in case you want to pursue these on, on your own so uh hopefully you, you you learn something something new which was the main intention yeah uh, I can see most of the folks have already shared what exactly is their expectation, uh, what topics or areas of interest would you like to see covered in the future webinars. I'll just give five seconds more. Uh, folks who couldn't find an option on this particular survey question poll here, you can share that on the chat here. I'll make a note of it if you have a suggestion for our future webinars. And I'll just quickly end this poll in five seconds. So five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let me quickly end the poll and just quickly share it as well. So I can see a lot of folks have voted for career advancement strategy. So that's great. I'll, we will make a note of it and we'll try to bring up more future webinars on that. We do a lot of webinars uh, like uh, on career masterclass as well, but we'll do on career advancement, advancement strategies as well. Uh, I can see 50% uh, uh, of the folks have voted for uh, three options which have gotten equal in votes resume enhancement, review and tips, tools, platforms, library workshops. Again, that one is something we would love to, uh, you know, bring it in and personal branding and networking. That is equally important. I, I, I totally agree with that. And I can see 38% of the folks have also voted for pro program project demos as well. And a few of the folks have voted for case studies and Trends, trends, industry specific invites. I can see how the folks have voted for that. This is something upcoming in November and December. So you can expect a lot of these trends, uh, industry specific insights being covered. So thank you so much for sharing with us what exactly uh, are the topics uh, or areas of interest you would like to see covered in the future webinar. Thank you so much, everyone, for helping us out uh, to make this uh, webinars you know better every time we do it. And again, like once again, thank you so much, Armando, for joining us and uh, taking us to the program. We will be ending the session now. Thank you, folks, for joining in. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I think someone has asked about the email. Uh, so if you have any questions about the program, you can mail us at askus at uh, simplylearn.net. I'm just putting that on chat here. You can just mail us, mail us here. And uh, basically, uh, if you have any questions about the program in general, 
uh, and uh, basically we'll be answering all your, for your queries uh, from here. So please do that if you have any more questions about the program. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Thank you for being a great audience. Thank you so much.